Yeah! It's Josh Williams here, and welcome to the One Man Podcast, episode number 59, for Wednesday, June 27th, 2018. How are you, onesies? Welcome to the show. Can you guys hear me? I was reaching back as far as I could to try to get my coaster for my drink whilst still doing the opening intro. So if you heard that little like thing that sounds like something falling, it didn't fall. It just slipped off the side and I caught it like a pro, but of course I can't uh, make the sound go away. Either way, welcome to the show guys. Uh, we had a fun week. At least I did. Uh, the first half of it, I can't remember still struggling to, um, to do everything on my notes, which is to do, to do this every single day. Um, in terms of writing the notes for the podcast, so I can remember everything I did, but I'll tell you this much. All the stuff worth talking about this week, I uh, I remembered flawlessly today when I made the notes. So, um, you know, it, it's not uh, you. You may have missed out on a a story about me going grocery shopping or something, but nothing, nothing that interesting. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be talking about. Uh, you know, I did some interviews. I did two interviews last week. Um, one with K. Trevor Wilson that came out uh, last Friday. If you guys haven't listened to that yet, please check it out. K. Trevor Wilson, super, super funny guy. And then I got to sit down and uh, and do an interview with my buddy, Matt Davis. So I'll be telling you guys about those ones. Um, I did a, a corporate show for Adobe. Myself and K. Trev did that. And, uh, you know, we had our uh, quote unquote end of the world party at the house. <laughs> we, uh, I did tastings and promos and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So may as well just jump right into it, guys. The first thing that I can remember of note, I've been doing, uh, I've been doing better with Uber. Um, still not able to get up and out the door at 6 AM, but I did make it out, uh, one day last week at six, which was great. Um, I had some, uh, nothing, nothing to write home about Uber. I'm just, I'm just, I'm glad I'm, I'm up and I'm doing that every day. I'm actually getting a lot more out of my day because I'm starting to get little micro tasks done in between rides with Uber. And then by the time I get home at like 10 o'clock, you know, somewhere between 10 and 11, I'm even starting to run some errands, you know, at places I need to go on my way home and whatnot. So I'm actually maximizing time. Um, not getting a whole lot of sleep. I'm getting maybe six hours a night. Um, you know, and I say, maybe not, I'm getting six hours. I'm maybe maybe getting six hours. It's usually about five. Um, but I'm getting stuff done during the day. I have more hours in my day because I'm, I'm awake more. Um, I'm getting out, I'm getting some sun, still keeping the head shaved, bald, all that fun stuff. We're going to talk about all that this week. But, uh, in terms of last week, most of the, the, you know, stuff that you missed Wednesday, Thursday kind of stuff. And eh, it's just a uh, regular living your life, trying to, trying to work on the small things, you know? Um, I, uh, what did I do on, on Thursday? I had a really cool show at Adobe. So uh, Adobe, the company, you know, that makes Photoshop and other such softwares, all sorts of things from the Adobe suite. They have a, an office here in Ottawa and they were doing a big get together for their staff. So there were salespeople there. There was uh, tech people. Uh, it was myself and K. Trevor Wilson. Uh, again, K. Trevor Wilson star of Crave TV's Letterkenny. And, uh, you know, Jesus, he's been on Jimmy Kimmel Live. He's open for Louis C.K., Sarah Silverman, Patton Oswalt. Uh, he won the Just for Laughs Homegrown competition. He was on the roast battle with uh, Jeff Ross, the roast master general. Um, lots of things. So, so K. Trev, I'll be honest with you guys. I was really, really stressing about the gig. To be to be completely frank with you, because um, K. Trev is so funny that for the whole trip there, and it was of course in the middle of the afternoon too, right? So day shows are always a little bit tougher, but I was just concerned that, uh, I'm like, I, I gotta, I gotta go on. Luckily I'm not following them. Jesus. That'd be even scarier. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, I had to go on doing 15 minutes before him and I just didn't want it to be a night and day difference. You know what I mean? Like the contrast between the talent levels and everything to just be so crazy. But, um, we both did, uh, very, very well. The, the group was, was great. It was daytime. People were a little hesitant to laugh, you know, and that's, that's my job on a show like that is I'm the guy who, uh, who opens up and, uh, you know, finds, finds where the lines are and, uh, you know, crosses them a little bit, see how they're going to do with it. It was a, it was a good time. I remember speaking with one person just, you know, around the room, I was ch chatting with one guy and he just was giving me like one word answers and taking a real long time in order to do them. And I'm like, what department do you work in? And he's like, uh, tech support. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Like <laughs> antisocial sitting in a cubicle. Um, anyways, it was, it was, it was really, uh, it really a fun time. And, uh, and I spoke to another person who was like, I'm in sales ops. I'm like, fucking sales ops. That sounds like somebody who's flying around in a helicopter when they see shitty graphic design somewhere, they're like, all right, we need salesmen in this area, sell our product, get them going, go, 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 go. They're dropping like paratroopers into the area. I had a good time. They were great sports. Um, K Trev 
lit the room up. He, he was outstanding. I got to hear a bunch of new bits that I haven't heard from him since last he was in town. So, um, everything was great. And of course, right away after the, uh, the, the, uh, event when you like the, the show uh, yeah the corporate event uh we came back and we did the uh the interview the podcast you've heard that already then you uh, you know how that went that was a lot of fun um it's funny too because when we we're at the the um the corporate event they had uh they had bought they had beer and all sorts of stuff like that which was cool inside an office building three in the afternoon on a thursday um, they're trying to get those people, but their people weren't really drinking that much. They weren't really eating. They'd ordered in, there's this place called like Mr. Pretzel or whatever. It's a big chain now that's open in Ottawa. I've only seen in the last like year or so, but they must've ordered like 200 pretzels from them. And there was like maybe 50 people in attendance and not everyone ate them. So they were like, as we were packing up the gear and getting ready to leave, they were like, you take pretzels, you guys take pretzels. And, uh, they were amazing. I'm not gonna lie. We, we had pretzels. Um, I I've, I've had pretzels now for, for days. I mean, ran out of them a couple of days ago, but, but they sent me home with a box of pretzels, <clears throat> which I quickly spread around to other people and gave some of the people to club, whatever. And the opposite of, of what I'm trying to do health wise. Um, so yeah, I tried to get rid of them in every way I can. We used some of them up uh, at the party this weekend, things like that. But, uh, yeah. They gave us a ton of pretzels. Probably, I would say, if you were to have purchased them at the stand, you probably it'd be a hundred dollars worth of worth of pretzels. Um, you know, start my own pretzel wagon, like in The Simpsons, right? Oh, yeah, when I get in the pretzel game, cha cha. Um, anyways, uh, it was a great show. Great show. Came back. The interview was fantastic. Um, on Saturday, or sorry, that was that was Thursday. On Friday morning, I sat down with my buddy, Matt Davis, who's in town as well, uh, doing shows. So it was the show at Absolute Comedy. I, I hope, you know what I mean? I mentioned this in the podcast um, last week. I really hope you guys took advantage of of seeing Matt Davis and K-Trev at Absolute Comedy. Guys, it's like the strongest fucking show that that you could see. It's it's one of the strongest shows we've had at the club in a very long time. And that's not to say that any of the, the, the comic acts are, are not good, but that, you got two headliners and two of the club's favorite headliners and like different style material and stuff. So, you know, Matt Davis hosting and, and Trev closing it down. That was, that was a crazy good show. So I, I hope people, my listeners in Ottawa did go see that show. Cause that's, you're not going to see a show that's, that's strong like that top to bottom. Like for example, Mike Stork, who I have an interview with on the podcast we did, you know, earlier in the year. Uh, Mike Stork is back at Absolute Comedy this week, and I can't remember if he's hosting or headlining, but uh, but Mikey's great, and uh, again, I'd recommend that. And Mikey's so, like one, another club favorite, um, but again, now you take another guy as strong as Mike and put him on the show, that's that's what you had last week. Anyways, you get what I'm saying, all right? I'm not saying anything you haven't said before. Um, what a great show last week. So I, I spoke with Matt, and Matt, um, and I, uh, we had a really long conversation um, I, I, it's not topped any times I've done before, but again, it's a close to two hour long podcast, but we don't really get into, um, comedy in terms of like, we started talking about his comedy career and then it just shifts to like, um, again, one of the reasons I wanted to have him on the podcast is one of the smartest guys that I've, I've ever met. He's well read. He he's traveled the entire world. He's very ethical. He comes from, uh, the States, but he comes from a part of the States where perhaps they don't have the, uh, geez, how do I say this politely? Um, and I've never been there. So a part of me is, you know, I'm going off of what I've heard and, and stereotypes and stuff, but Matt is from, uh, Alabama. They're not the most open-minded progressive, you know, forward thinking, uh, part of the United States, but you know, like that's basically whenever you're making, you know, doing an impression of a stupid person, you know, <laughs> what the hell are you talking about, man? People are making fun of people from, you know, the South there, you know, Alabama, <clears throat> excuse me. So the whole idea is, um, you know, Matt, Matt's crazy smart. Um, he, he's well read. We had a, a good discussion that goes all over the place. Um, I'm really excited for you guys to hear that episode. That episode is recorded and will be available for you on Friday. So uh, I'll have that out. You guys get excited for that because that's going to be awesome. I, I'm really looking forward to getting the feedback on that. And then of course, Friday afternoon, I had uh, a tasting and I had to fly across the city uh, in order to do it. So I basically I woke up, I drove Uber for hours, went and got Matt. We did a a podcast. I think I actually snuck in again on my way home, Costco, getting some more stuff for the party. Um, everything shy of, you know, day of stuff. And, uh, we did the podcast, 
Then I came in, you know, <laughs> took him back to the condo, shower, changed, fly across the city for a tasting. We did a tasting for uh, some Smirnoff products. Uh, not bad. Good, good stuff. I mean, I'm not going to give it a review. They're not a partner yet, but that's another thing that's in the uh, little, little conversation started with uh, some of the companies that I work for uh, externally. And we'll see if we might have some new partners. I also got to get a hold of, you know, uh, some of the partners that I have now and just see, uh, you know, where we stand. I don't want to turn, uh, I always started this off with like, I, I wasn't going to turn the podcast into just a giant infomercial. Um, but uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, see see what partnerships I can strengthen and which ones are, you know, just maybe maybe ran their course. But who's he talking about? I don't know. I, nobody yet so far. I just want to see who all's invested. Um, but anyways, yeah. So so uh, I did the tasting for Smirnoff, and that that was enough for one day. <laughs> it was it was good to come home and just fucking uh, you know relax after that. Um, Saturday, Costco first thing with Kamar. We, uh, we went out and we got, uh, you know, like all of the hot dogs and, and day of shit for the party. Kamar was just like, I don't care. You know, we all, we all split money on, on the bills. And then day of Kamar was like, I don't care if this costs me an extra 200 bucks. We're, you know, I, I'm, we're, 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 I'm going all out today. So we were wandering around Costco, getting the stuff that we were going to get, you know, hot dogs, buns, that kind of stuff. Uh, and, um, I can't remember what else he went. We got to the back of Costco and that's where like, you know, the, the pastries and stuff are. And I just said, Hey, you know, Hey, come on, should we get a, a cake? And we both walked over to where the cakes were. And it was just so funny. Cause like at the same time I was like, look at this cake. And he's like, look at this cake, a different cake. And, uh, we look at each other's cakes and we're both pointing at the same cake. Only mine was vanilla. His was chocolate. And it was this giant, uh, giant cake with mortar boards, right? Like the gra graduation hats on them. And it just said, happy graduate or congratulations to the 2018 graduates or whatever. We just, both of us thought it was fucking hysterical. The idea of a graduation cake. I just thought it was funny to look at. Kamar's like, let's get it. And he grabs it. And I go, seriously? Like, I didn't, I didn't believe him at all. I thought he was kidding. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're getting a fucking cake. Okay. Puts in the cart and I'm waiting for him to go, ah, I just fuck it with you. I take it out of the cart. Doesn't, doesn't stays in the cart waiting for bitter end. We get all through Costco, get all the fucking shit. We need veggie veggies and, and fruit platters and all that bullshit. Um, and then finally, uh, finally, yeah, he decides it's, it's coming home with us. So, um, I got everybody home. We had to hit the dollar store for some other last minute bullshit. But, uh, yeah, we got back to the house. Jason and Kamar started, uh, prepping everything. I started making fruit, you know, uh, rum punch and the, the sangria and shit like that. And, uh, and then I had to take off cause I had a tasting, you know, so tasting before the party, I, uh, what did I, what was I doing the tasting for that? It was, uh, it was crown Royal bourbon mash. So crown Royal's going after the, uh, the Jack Daniels market, making a bourbon, you know, a bourbon mash. I don't know if you know much about Jack Daniels. It's a very popular alcohol. Uh, old number seven, I believe it's called. And uh, old number seven is a sour mash whiskey. And that's where they take the uh, the corn mash from like a, a regular bourbon. And then they make, uh, you know, they make another uh, a bourbon out of it. Another, they, they use what's already been used. They make another one. And that's how JD's made. And I believe that is how the Crown Royal is made. Either way, um, it's booze. So doing a tasting. Uh, a little sippy sip here and there for myself, considering I had a giant party to come back to. So I'm there uh, doing the tasting. Tasting was over for me at 3.30. Party was supposed to get kicking off around one o'clock. And uh, as I'm as I'm there, you know, waiting for people to come in, it was kind of quiet in the store because the, the clouds were starting to get a little overcast. Um, I'm checking my phone. I'm already seeing Kamar, you know, posting videos on Instagram and stuff like that of the parties. Nobody there yet. So when I got home at like 3.30, uh, some people had arrived. Uh, very cool. People were playing fucking ring toss or whatever the hell it's called. Horseshoes, you know, out in the lawn. We were, uh, you know, the, the drinks were out. I couldn't wait to get upstairs and just fucking change into something comfortable. But uh, we had the the steam whistle keg, everything like that. The day was, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. And I'll get into it. I'll get into it. Because we had lots of people sort of come and go. So Kamar's family was there when I got there. Uh, he had some people, you know, sisters, uh, his, you know, his uh, dad cousins, things like that, um, showed up. So it was cool to, to, to meet his folks. Uh, we had, uh, you know, a uh, local comedian, Mark Hatfield. He's uh, he's a good friend. He came by, he's got a podcast as well called the, uh, the Hatfield trip. Who else was there early on? Uh, some other, some other comedians, uh, from around the, from around the area, 
you know, and, um, we had a good time. Anyways, it, the day started off early. We were just having drinks, playing horseshoes, never played horseshoes before, but Kamara and I were on the same team, played, played well, worked well. <laughs> we won undefeated. It's very competitive at our, at our house, by the way, when, when you get a bunch of guys together playing uh games, doesn't matter what the game is, right? We'd be rolling dice, we'd be throwing fucking horseshoes, throwing bean bags. doesn't matter. We're competitive. Um, I'm trying to think of just, again, I, I, I had a good time, but I'm trying to quantify the day and just how it went. Uh, it rained. So we moved inside. We were shooting the shit. Um, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. It, it was like a rolling party too, in the sense that like the, the attendees were constantly turning over, which was great. So if we'd had everybody that was there for like the whole day, it would have been out of control. But because it was like consistently 30 people and people would just, you know, as, as three people would leave, four, four more would show up. Two people would leave. Another three would show up, you know, five people would leave. Three more would show up, you know, uh, it was, uh, it was fun. So the drinks were nonstop. <laughs> we had so much booze and it was, it, there was no issues of running out. We were, we were cooking food. We probably should have got more food because our original plan was like, Hey, you know, bring, bring your own food. We got the barbecue going. And then like the core group, we would have like hot dogs for whatever. We just ended up feeding everybody, you know, cause we're, uh, we're sweethearts. So we would just cook and there's everyone would get a dog. Um, Mike Stork, as I mentioned, uh, great comic came up from, uh, from Baltimore early. So Mikey did what Mikey does, which is to walk into the house completely naked. Uh, I say Stark naked, but it really should be changed to Stork naked. Um, more people have said Stork's naked than Stark naked. <laughs> That's kind of like Mike's thing now. It's like, it's almost like hacky for someone else to try to be naked because it's like, no, that's Stork's thing. You know, that's his bit to just be, uh, yeah. And it's not even got anything to do with stage. It's just, he's just, uh, you know, he's just around naked. That's what, that's what Storky does. So that was fun. We were waiting for the rain to stop things, things calm down, whatever. At one point, um, Jason left with, uh, a friend of his girlfriend, Noreen's, uh, she listened to the podcast, left with, An I believe Andrea to go get fireworks. I don't know if they both ended up going, there were some people coming and going plus, you know, drinking and I was drunk, but not insanely. Not trying to let you guys worry. Just, you know, I was, I was nursing something all day. I was very, very inebriated. I was actually, f I felt so fucking full just from all the liquid. Um, I was drinking water too. At the same time, I never, never got, never got drunk. I was buzzed for the vast majority of the day, but I remember, fuck, I'm trying to, you know, I didn't black out. I don't, I don't pull that shit. I don't know about you guys, but whenever someone's like, Oh, I fucking I black out, man. I was drinking so much. I blacked out. I don't remember anything. I, I always remember stuff. There was just not a whole lot of stuff of note too much during the day. You know, like we were fighting with the weather. We were cooking The we kept, we kept waiting to like, for some reason, the inside of the place, we have our barbecue set up so that it's actually on this landing outside of the back addition. So it's outside but it's right up next to the window and it's actually, Jason's got it hooked up to the natural gas of the house and it's pointed inside towards the window. So you basically, even in the middle of winter, you can just walk into the back addition. So you're still inside, slide the window open, open the barbecue and cook through the window. So inside we had a folding table there um, with everything on it for the thing, but somebody put the cake, unwrapped the cake and then stuck it there. So the whole course of the day there's this, just this exposed cake and we keep waiting for, you know, Simon to come back, come home from work. And then as soon as he gets in J Fox off, it's like, oh, okay, we're going to wait for, you know, this person to show up. We're going to wait for that person to get back, like all this stuff. So the cake got damaged a bunch of different times from even just animals who are drunk, knocking condiments and stuff. So, so lesson learned, cake should be on display somewhere else. It shouldn't be next to the busiest area unwrapped and, and waiting for six hours. It was just inviting uh, problems, but either way, it was still funny because everyone who saw it laughed. They're like, oh, who's like, like people were like, oh my God, who's graduating? <laughs> like that was the funniest thing is they just kept asking who was the grad, who was the one who was graduating. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, anything interesting in the evening? Like there's definitely interesting parts of the evening. Like I said, people kept showing up at different times. So we had friends come. I invited, uh, Karen McDonald, another comic in the city. Um, you know, some of you listeners had reached out and said, you know, you're, you weren't able to make it for whatever reasons. Uh, you know, listen to the podcast, Dave, my buddy, Dave was there. Uh, he showed up, David did some cooking in the evening as well, which was nice. Um, just a lot of fun. At one point, uh, Jason went out and got some fireworks, um, cause they're totally legal to buy. Uh, and that's not sarcastic, totally legal to buy fireworks. And then at one point there were some kids, 
uh, setting off fireworks, tap the nose, um, <laughs> are right across the street from our place in the parking lot. And uh, this was probably around 11 o'clock at night. And, uh, and someone called the cops. So, uh, you know, we had also purchased sparklers. Well, I should say we, I did not purchase sparklers. I thought it was totally stupid. Um, uh, I haven't been impressed by sparklers in a very long time, but, uh, but, but Jason bought some sparklers. Um, and when the cops came like, well, we weren't lighting fireworks. We, we, we have, we have sparklers right here. We showed them the sparklers. Um, Someone called the cops, the cops came and this was a funny thing. And I'll, I'll get more into it a little bit later on into the podcast. Uh, unless I have anything worth talking about looking here at my notes for the rest of the week. Wasn't really, wasn't really a whole lot else. So maybe I'll just get right into it. The, um, oh, my buddy, Jason too. Again, Jason, and I have some products coming up, not Jason who I live with, but Jason, uh, daily, um, Jay's a, a venture capitalist, super, super smart dude and, and works fucking hard. He's got a, a million things going on. He came by, um, and he works with uh, a new brewery called Overflow here in Ottawa. He brought some some of the new beers uh, in for me to taste. So so Jason and I were sitting there. I remember us having a cigar on the back porch, uh, you know, right before the fireworks started or right afterwards. We were just shooting the shit or whatever. Such such a fun. It was like I said, like it, there were some people coming and going. I had a chance to, to to catch back up with my buddy Dan Metcalf, who's an amazing artist. Um, we sat and we, we had conversations for a long time and he's like, la, 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 my wife. And Dan was such a small guy in high school and he's not really a small guy anymore, uh, in terms of like height, you know, but just, it was just so funny for him to see like, oh, la, la, my wife. And I was like, what? <laughs> just not one of those people you ever think is going to have a wife. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, my point being is, uh, it, it's just rolling over all day long. Great, great, you know, opportunities to, to catch up with different friends and stuff like that. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. When the cops came, um, they were having conversations with us. And at first they were like, yeah, well, if there's no fireworks, whatever. And, and Jason, all I saw was Jason talking to police. And I'm like, ah, I got to go over and make sure that it stays at least civil. And uh, when the cops were saying like, okay, you guys, you know, whatever, you, you know, that's not loud. I see that. He goes, but then the cop says, uh, you need to understand that there's, uh, you, you can't have people out in the lawn drinking. You can't have people drink on the back porch. And Jay's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you can't be drinking outside like that. And he goes, and I said, well, what about the porch? What in front of the porch? He goes, you can't be on the porch drinking either. Technically you can't be on the porch. Um, and I was like, oh, that seems particularly shitty. Um, but why is that? Right. I'm like, why, why is that a thing? Like, you know, Jason's like, that, that's bullshit. I don't believe you. He goes, he goes, if I'm, if I'm mowing my lawn on my own property, I can't have a beer. And they're like, no, you cannot just drink a beer and walk around on your lawn. It's, it's legal. It's not, you know, it's not zoned for it or whatever it is. Um, and I kept trying to say like, okay, so help us understand that. If you're sitting on the back porch of your own house, like our, our house is on the corner. So we don't really have a backyard. We have, uh, three areas that are open. One of them that's not facing the two, the, the intersecting streets is our driveway. So there's no yard or whatever there. There's just, you know, paved driveway. And then the other side is the front front of the house lawn. And then there's the, the side slash back of the yard where the, the patio is, is built out. So <laughs> we're, we're asking like, so you, we can't sit on our back porch and have a beer. They're like, no, like you don't have anything. There's no fence blocking it off or anything like that. So someone can just walk in off the street and walk up right on your porch and, and drink it. So, um, what we, what we got from the whole thing was that we would have to get a hold of bylaw. Like the cop was trying to be nice. He was being way too like authoritative. And I don't mean like he wasn't being a dick. He wasn't throwing his weight around, but there was no like humanity to him. You know what I mean? Like he was clearly full cop, you know, like all business. And he kept saying, sir, um, you can talk to bylaw if you want. There's no, there's no zoning, but I'm telling you right now, the law is this. And Jason's like, I don't no, That's not true. I don't believe you. Like he, he was like, he's like, that's not true. That's stupid. So I was just like, okay, well I go, so officer, I go, forgive me. I'm just trying to understand so that we're not breaking the law. And he goes, look, I'm not gonna give you guys a hard time. I'm not gonna give you a ticket or anything like that. I'm telling you what the law is. He said, but if bylaw comes, bylaw is not here to help you or anything like that. They look, they see that this, they, they know what the law is and they go, you're breaking it. And they give you a ticket. He goes, so I'm just trying to tell you, it's a good thing that we're here and not bylaw because you know, you can't, you can't do this. So I was going, all right, but how do we like, I go, how, how do we differentiate? You know, like we're not going to build a fence around our property so that we can, you know, be, be drinking behind a fence. I go, so how, how can this possibly be? So, um, 
we uh, we were asking questions. He's like, I'm not a bylaw guy, but I'm telling you that that maybe if you had a gate in front of your your you know the steps up onto your porch, maybe that would close it off. Because the idea is like. Everyone's like, well, that's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It's arbitrary. It's like, like this became the topic of conversation for like the next 40 minutes. Because right after, right while we were speaking to the cops, bylaw comes driving around the corner and I'm like, oh, okay. So I go, Jay, get all the booze off the back porch. Let's, let's get everybody inside. No booze so that we don't get a ticket. And I'm trying to say, you know, trying to figure out a little bit more from the cops and go, you know, what do we do? So the cops go over, speak to bylaw. I'm politely waiting my turn to talk to bylaw because I wanted to ask them questions right away. And, uh, and when the cops were done with them, bylaw guy just fucked off, didn't even get a chance to ask him. And they were like, well, he doesn't, he doesn't know because he doesn't deal with this particular kind of bylaw and there's different, different bylaw options or whatever. And I'm like, well, if he's the fucking guy driving around, you'd, you'd think he would have the ability to do all of it. Anyways. So here's a little tidbit of, of information. Uh, you know, this, like I said, the conversations they were having for, for all homeowners, cause this is true for everyone, at least in the Ottawa area. I don't know if that it goes out to the country. I don't know if it's the same universally for Ontario or if it's municipal to municipal uh, or yeah. Yeah. Municipal to municipal or municipality to missing that. Fuck. I don't give a fuck. And you know what I'm saying? God damn it. Um, you can't even like, so, so some of you might have a backyard. Like I'll, I'll, I, I know one of my friends, the big tall guy, um, he has a piece of property now he's just South of the city. So I don't know if it works differently for him, but it could be the very same legal rule is uh, he's got no fence around his backyard. You can walk right up his driveway into his backyard. There's no fence, no privacy, whatever. So that's because there's no, like, here's here's what we understood from the conversation. And everybody was arguing it. They're going, well, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. I'm like, yeah, but with when it comes to the law, you have to have something discernible. You can't just have a bunch of gray and go like, well, here's how we decide. In this case, we do this. In case we, maybe we maybe we do that. And it seems really, like, obviously it's one of those things where there's lots of laws in place where, you know, nobody really enforces them. But if you're being a dick, you know, if you cause trouble, if you draw attention to yourself, then if somebody wants to give you a ticket, they absolutely can. You know, in Ottawa, where I was walking Chase, you know, the last podcast, of the Arboretum, there were signs up fucking everywhere, everywhere saying no dogs off leash. So I was actually walking Chase on leash and there was dozens and dozens and dozens of people around me with their dogs off leash. So eventually I let Chase off leash because I'm like, well, clearly nobody gives a fuck. So it's not something that's for. So even though that's the law, it's one of those things where, you know, people are being left alone. If you're respectful, then, you know, if you're not causing trouble, you're not going to draw attention to yourself. Really, that's what it is at the end of the day. So, but the rule seems to be that if you do not have something that blocks your, your property off, you can't drink in your backyard. So, um, you know, Jason's girlfriend, Noreen, uh, she has a drive where you just walk up and you walk right in her backyard. So technically she, you can't drink in her backyard because someone, someone could walk right off the street, right into the backyard and, and drink a beverage, you know, a, a alcoholic drink. So you're, you're not zoning it. So the, the whole point is that in order to have the ability to drink, you have to have something that blocks the public off where someone have, would have to knowingly be like, you know, going through a gate, effectively some sort of breaking and entering kind of thing. Like. If someone walks up, opened the gate to our steps and walked up onto our porch, well, it's like, now it's like, well, it's not public anymore because you just walk through a gate. It's private. You know, that's it. It Basically, it's a clear definition between private and public. Like people go, well, what about the property line? Well, there's no, there's no line showing property line. The first three feet of the property line belong to the city anyways. A lot of people don't know that. I had some woman give me shit because Chase pissed on the first six inches of grass near her house. And she's like, don't, please don't use my lawn as a toilet. And I said, okay, well, he's just. I'm sorry. I go, he's a pup. Where, where would you like me to take him? That doesn't belong to somebody. And I said, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, man, but to be honest with you, the first three feet belong to the city anyways, if they want to build a sidewalk or something like that, it's the first three, three feet from the curb. So like if there's already a sidewalk there, then that doesn't count. You know what I mean? Like, but parts of your property, you know, may or may not belong to the city. So there's no clear lines that show what's yours, what's not, and it's not going to stop a teenager. Yeah, da, da, da. So the idea is that in order for it to be legal for you to drink, there has to be something that breaks off. So, so a lot of people who sit on their front porch and have an, a drink that by law could pull up and give you a ticket for that. And you'd yell and scream and go, this is fucking bullshit. How can I not? It's, again, it's one of those things. If you're not causing trouble, you're not drawing attention to yourself. Nothing's ever going to happen. But if you're you know, uh, setting off fireworks or kids in your area are setting off fireworks. 
And by law comes, you know, they might not find one thing, but if they're going to, you know, they might, well, now that you've drawn attention, there's a bunch of people standing around your lawn and on your back deck drinking right open to the public, you know, different story. You know, how, do, how does the, basically, how does a kid not wander down the street and just mix into the crowd and start drinking? You know what I mean? Like it's not, that's, so that's the rule. You got to have, you got to have a, a fenced in private yard in order to drink. You cannot in Ottawa, and it's probably true in a lot of other cities, um, you cannot drink on your property in an area that's not completely enclosed by fence of some kind. So um, we're going to look at that. I, I don't think we're going to do anything about it. Jason's even said to me, he's like, you know, that, that night might have been an issue, but um, generally speaking, if we're sitting on the porch having a drink, no one's going to bother us. But, but just so everyone knows, if you have a yard that's like, you know, a driveway and you can just walk into the backyard, it's kind of open concept or whatever. Um, you technically can't drink legally in your, in your property, not in the front, not in the back, unless it's closed off from the public, something, you know, uh, black and white, like a fence, right? Cause the law can't be shades of gray. Can't be like, no, oh, well, you know, it's up off the driveway. I guess the driveway. No, if it's open to the public, someone can just walk in and they don't have to open a barrier, you know, we'll go through a fence or pass through something, you know, to, to be a visible separation from public to private, you know? And I don't mean like common sense, of course, common added, whatever. You, you know what? I think you guys get what I'm saying, but that's, that's a real thing. That's a, that's a fucking, a real thing in Ottawa. So, you know, um, I've, I've been, uh. I've been getting sun. I've been, uh, I've been, you know, doing the elliptical machine. We have an elliptical machine in the basement. I've been doing that a few times this week for like 20 minutes of time, sweating my ass off. I have been eating better again, better, not perfect, but better. You know, that definitely the, the barbecue day is a wash, but, uh, I remember I probably got to bed at like two 30 in the morning. And in fact, I had to do a, a pet event on Sunday. And I got up at uh, nine o'clock. Surprisingly, I went to bed at two 30, got up at nine. I expected to be super hungover. I thought I was going to roll out of bed like right before, um, like right, right before I had to go to, to leave, to go to work. So I was really happy to be, um, to not be hung over and to not, you know, to, to wake up a few hours before I had to leave. So I went down and I took the first shift of, you know, doing, uh, doing damage control to the, uh, all the, the, the mess and everything left for everybody, but it was, it was a ton of stuff, but, uh, you know, I put in an hour or so before I had to go to work. I did a tasting on, or not a tasting, sorry. I did a pet event on Sunday, but the weather was wacky. It was dead in the store. I was, I was just going through the motions in order to, to get home, you know, did a few little last minute pick shit up. And, uh, and then I, I went home. I can't even remember how, how Sunday ended for me. Um, the last couple of days have just been, you know, Uber and errands and get stuff ready, uh, more exercise. We're spending a little more time, you know, when everybody gets home around the same time of day, um, you know, Kamar and Simon, I should say I'm, I'm here and there throughout the course of the day. We've been sitting on the back porch, shooting the shit, you know, having fun, uh, having some drinks, you know, the old illegal way. So there's no fence. <laughs> We've been, uh, we've just been, uh, been having a, you know, learning to do a little more relaxed. I, I did run a bunch of errands. I got my books, uh, more books from DK and I'm very excited to be, you know, telling you guys about one of them. I'm going to be reviewing one shortly. Um, I read, uh, I read this evening and of course, as always recording the podcast on Tuesday. So, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I, things are going, going good right now. I don't want to jinx anything, but I, um, I feel like I'm getting closer to, you know, some, I don't want to say breakthroughs because that sounds so like psychological, not psychological, but like psychiatric, you know what I mean? Like we had a big breakthrough today. That was a big breakthrough. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing better. My five things are doing better. I'm doing my breathing. I'm posting my stuff on social media, getting used to being bald. So I'm, I'm going out more and not taking my hat with me. I'm not always using the hat, but it's sort of just sitting in the passenger seat, like a little crutch like a little safety blanket there. If I start to feel self-conscious about being bald, I'll just throw that on. But I'm kind of like, you know, uh, you guys have been great. I just today posted on uh, Instagram and Facebook a picture. So for the first time, I'm letting anyone who wants to see, see what I look like with no hair, you know? And uh, and so far, everyone who's seen me, everyone at the party was like, yeah, man, it looks good, you know? Uh, I, I think there's maybe been two people and I, I think it's my mom and dad who are like, uh, oh, it takes some getting used to everyone else was like, nah, man, it works. So I don't even, you know what? Here's the thing. I don't even know if they were bullshitting, but I would say the same amount of people who were saying like, Hey man, you're going bald, 
you know, which made me feel shitty. Um, I'm getting like that same amount of people who are like, man, it looks, it looks good. You know, and I'm not saying the same people, just that same, like, you know, every 10th person, you know, who's looking at my head is like, Hey, actually looks good. So, uh, thank you guys for all the, the support and the encouragement with it. It's making the, the transition a little bit easier for me. Um, so yeah, my exercise getting sun. Cause ever since I went, as soon as I shaved my head, I saw how fucking white my scalp was. So I'm um, starting to get some good color in there, starting to color other parts of me, right? I'm used to like these farmer's tans on my arms, but now I got to go out and, and get the rest of me. I want to get like, you know, both sides of my arms, nice tans, everything up to the, uh, the chest and shoulders. Now I'm doing, working out at home in a tank top and I'm all white, right? So I want to get more sun. I've been sitting out, you know? listening to stuff, audio books, listen to a book called the game by Neil Strauss, which seems old. It seems more like, I don't know. It sounds like bullshit. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it's about these, the secret society of guys who like seduce women or whatever. I had a free audible credit. I needed to use it on something. And it was like, at first I was looking through like, you know, personal relationship books and stuff like that. And then it was like the secret society of seductors and blah, 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 New York times bestseller. And I started reading about it and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. And then it's, and then listening to it, it's like, I don't know. I feel this book is really old. I maybe, sh I maybe wasn't paying attention to what year it came out, but anyways, it's, it's like, it's an interesting story, but I'm, I'm treating it more like fiction and just the stories of these guys who are, you know, going around and being pickup artists, whatever. It seems like it honestly seems more of like a, a movie, like, um, I don't want to say a comedy, but like a, you know, comedy drama about these guys who are like, yeah, I'm a ladies man. It's honestly, you know what? It sounds like, like good luck Chuck kind of thing, you know, or like American pie. These guys only, instead of being like really bad at it, they're like really good at it, but they sound like the sleaziest douches, you know, like they're describing these guys who are like dressed like goths and paint their nails black. And it's like, just stand out when you walk in a room, you want to stand out. And I'm like, this is fucking, this guy sounds like a fucking idiot. Anyways. And it's funny too, because they're saying like, here's, we'll teach you ways to seduce women. And it's like every one of them like goes to a bar and like does magic tricks to get girls' attention and stuff. But, but I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not even a quarter of the way through it, but it's just, that's what it sounds like thus far. So I've been listening to that while I'm laying in the sun, getting burnt on my back and uh, be watching arrested, excuse me, arrested development while I'm, while I'm exercising an elliptical bike. So I, I watched a season or two of that you know, so sporadically before. So I wanted to get back into it, but I would forgotten most of what I, uh, what I'd watched before. So started watching that again and, uh, and that's it. That's what's where I'm at right now, guys. You know, um, that was my week. I had a good time. Party was preoccupying a lot of us, just little things here and there to get ready for it. You know, a lot of some of the stuff that I forgot about last week was just cleaning up and, you know, we were, we were getting a lot of stuff into the back porches, making sure we had enough chairs. We were also sort of taking turns, picking things up and bringing over chairs from, from absolute to make sure that we had enough seating for everybody. I know that one of the days this week, I bought a really cool folding chair from Costco it says it's 225 weight limit. So, um, I sat in it at Costco. It was good. And I sat in it the other day and it was good, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm close to 300 pounds. So I'm really hoping that, uh, Really hoping that that 225 weight limit, you know, as long as I'm not fucking throwing myself around in there, it'll be, uh, you know, it'll stay in good shape for a while. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was my week. I had a great time. I really did. I, I hope you had a great week too. I really, really do. Um, in honor of, uh, two things, you know, one thing coming up Canada day, right? Canada day, big plans for a lot of people. I'm sure in the uh, Ottawa area, happy uh, Canada day, of course, to all of my listeners. I know it's coming up before we talk again. So uh, I hope you guys have great plans. I'd love to know what your plans are as always, you know, feel free to email me in. Let me know next time. Uh, next podcast will be, uh, you know, Canada be 151 years old. So let me know what you, what you did, what your plans were and you know, how they ended up going. You know, everyone's going to have parties coming up this week. And I'd love to, uh, I'd love to know, you know, how many, how many of you set yourselves on fire trying to do your own fireworks? You know, did you get the cops call on you? All that fun stuff. But uh, in honor of that, of course, I went to, uh, you know, looking through my old, uh, uncle John's bathroom readers from my partners at portablepress.com. And of course I went through the weird Canada book. And, uh, I figured, you know, there's all sorts of funny things about Canada. I was reading some articles and then I came across a page called loony laws and it says, believe it or not, these laws are real. And speaking of such a funny law with that fence rule, 
or, or blocked off and being able to drink. I thought, what a great article to read other laws that believe it or not, uh, you know, exist. So the first one, you may not drag a dead horse down Yonge street. One of the more infamous streets in Toronto on a Sunday, it's a real law. You can't drag your dead horse, you know? And I know that some of you are like, ah, but I can't, I don't want to throw it in the back of a van. I got so many dead horses. I don't want to put them in the back of a van. I want to drag it down Yonge street, the longest street in the world. Uh, can't do it on a Sunday though. That's illegal. Uh, this next one, somebody actually made like referenced night of, uh, Ken from absolute referenced this one night of, um, and this is a real law. He said, it and I was like, are you serious? He goes, yeah. And it was one of those ones where I'm like, man, you know, there's all sorts of goofy shit in the world that probably exists, but here it is in black and white in this book. So it is in fact true right here in Ottawa. You may not eat ice cream on bank street, the major shopping street in downtown Ottawa on a Sunday. So can't drag your dead horse down young on, uh, in Toronto and you can't eat ice cream on bank. Neither one of those things can happen on a Sunday. It is illegal to kill a Sasquatch in British Columbia. So if you find one, you know, and your first instinct is to kill it, that's illegal. Um, so you're going to have to find a way to wrestle it to the ground with some sort of like sexual harassment, self-defense thing so that you can, you can disarm it, you know, and then find a way to like, you know, maybe choke it out or something like that. You just choke out a Sasquatch because if you kill it, you know, or maybe, you know what, if you're, if you're strong enough to drag your dead horse down uh, young street, maybe you can choke out the Sasquatch and then drag his ass into Alberta because it's, it's illegal to kill a Sasquatch in BC, but if you choke him out and drag him, you know, the length of young street into Alberta, then you can fucking kill him when he's in Alberta. Cause Alberta, Alberta is less progressive, you know, in terms of their views of Sasquatch killing, uh, <laughs> It could just, you could just kill whatever the fuck you want in Alberta. Um, another one, a law in Alberta says that it is illegal to use dice to shoot craps. How else can you play? Um, another one, you may not fill a bathtub with more than 8.9 centimeters, uh, or 3.5 inches of water in Etobicoke, a suburb of Toronto. Perhaps this one was passed to help prevent babies from drowning. A baby can, the, 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 one of the first things they tell you about drowning is you can drown in like a fucking teaspoon of water, right? Or less than an inch of water. So 3.5 isn't going to make a big fucking difference. But anyways, that's, that's a rule. So in Etobicoke, you, it's illegal. Now, again, that's, that's another example of a rule that you're never going to get in shit for, because you're probably never going to get caught. But, uh, another one, you will be breaking the law in Nova Scotia. If you water the lawn while it's raining. In Montreal, you're not allowed to wash your car in the street or park your car in a way that blocks your own driveway. In Canada, Ontario, a uh, suburb of Ottawa, uh, in Canada, Ontario, it was illegal to have a clothesline in your ba- in your backyard. Uh, clothesline bans were put in place in Canada and other towns because some developers and homeowners thought clotheslines and the poles that support them destroyed the views. The bans were lifted in 2008 to help in, uh, with energy conservation. In Fort Cuapel, Quebec, a teen who walks downtown Main Street with his shoes untied could be arrested. Shoes must be tied. So that one uh, doesn't sound like it's a fucking ticket. Sounds like it's a, it's a goddamn offense. Mm. Sorry, I'm finishing up some of the sangria still kicking around. Throughout Canada, you would be breaking a law if you removed your bandages in public. What? Was this law passed so people wouldn't be grossed out is what it says here. You can do that. You're trying to change a bandage, you know, maybe you go to a little league game or whatever. You'd, you'd hurt your knee or something like that. And you had a bandage on, you go on to like put a fresh one on and you're breaking the law. That seems weird, but I, I know these guys do their research. Um, officially you are not allowed to pay in pennies for an item that costs 50 cents. So I don't know if that's like 50 cents or less, or maybe it's 50 cents or more. So like anything under 50, you pay because a roll of pennies is 50. So it's officially you're not allowed to pay in pennies for an item that costs 50 cents. Maybe it's just, ah, uh, one needs a little bit more explanation, but, but, uh, again, officially. So if anybody, you know, there's no pennies around anymore, but if anyone's still harboring pennies, you better watch your fucking ass. If you're trying to buy something for 50 cents, you better keep your lawn mowed in London, Ontario, a city bylaw states that if the grass in your front yard is longer than 3.8 centimeters, which is 1.5 inches, you can be fined $200. You hear that red, you hear that shit, watch your fucking lawn. 3.8 centimeters. Tiff, same goes for you. I know you guys live in a building. You know, who else do I know in London? Cam. Cam, you motherfucker. You mowing your lawn properly? Cam's actually a fucking great outdoor dude. 
loves loves spending time barbecuing. I I would probably I would probably be surprised. I don't really know how much uh, how much he does in terms of his like you know groundskeeping, but but knowing what I know of Cam, I would say that uh, safe bet safe bet that his fucking backyard is pristine because he's got a pooch. He likes to spend that time out there grilling, making fun stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna put my money on black and say that. Uh, that that's three point centi- three point eight centimeter rule probably isn't an issue for uh, for my buddy Cam in London. Um, I love my London people. You know, you guys are fucking fucking great. You reg- you know write into me regularly, makes me happy. Uh, and finally, an old law from British Columbia states that a bankrupt drunk <laughs> he's got to be bankrupt. Uh, an old law from British Columbia states that a bankrupt drunk who gets thrown into jail must be given a bottle of beer by the jailer if he demands it. How stupid is that, eh? That's Looney Laws, guys, for my partners at PortablePress.com. While I was at Costco in Ottawa this week, I noticed that they have the last three annual editions of uh, Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. So the Factastic, Uncanny, and Old Faithful. Uh, all three of those were available at Costco, but uh, the one that I just read from is, uh, is Weird Canada, guys. Um, next week, right after Canada Day, I will be reading an article from uh, Uncle John's Bathroom Reader Plunges into Canada. Just trying to keep, a, you know, everything in theme of this, uh, you know, this big holiday we have where our, our little country that could just keeps getting older and older like us. Um, so yeah, what else have we got? Oh yeah. So as I mentioned, um, to you guys last week too, um, I'm going to be hosting every single, uh, Monday at absolute comedy in Ottawa throughout the month of July. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, the prove your comic competition is basically where the, uh, the new guys of, of, of comedy in the Ottawa and they do it in Toronto as well. Um, you know, tr- advise for an opportunity to, to get in front of the owner of absolute Jason Lawrence and, and show what they got, you know, they, they, they work on their craft all year and they get on open mics and, and, you know, amateur nights at comedy clubs and, um, you know, trying to get stronger. So they get, they get seen by the, the man himself, the, uh, the absolute comedy Caesar. And I'll be, uh, I'll be, you know, up there cracking wise between them. Right. So just trying to keep the crowd warm. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, as always guys, listen to, uh, listen to my wonderful promo for my partners at absolute comedy. Absolute comedy is the best live stand up comedy from across North America with locations in Kingston, Toronto, and Ottawa, Ontario. These comedians have been featured on just for laughs, Netflix, comedy central, CBC's, the debaters, Jimmy Kimmel live Conan, the comedy network, and much, much more. Go to absolutecomedy.ca to see this week's lineup. Planning a night out is easy with dinner and show packages available at all locations. Live comedy is a great choice if you're organizing a celebration, fundraiser, company outing, or corporate event. Want the show brought to you? They'll send comedians to your venue with performances tailored to your event, creating a night of laughs your guests will love and won't soon forget. So for showtimes, ticket prices, gift certificates, special shows, and more, head to absolutecomedy.ca. Again, that's absolutecomedy.ca for the best live stand-up comedy from across North America. Oh, and while you're at Absolute Comedy, laughing your butts off throughout the month of uh, July, trying to see all these comedy hopefuls. Oh, man, I'm so thirsty. All this laughing has made my mouth dry. What is there for me to sip on? Oh, I'll tell you what. The sun gives life to the orchard. The orchard gives life to the apple. The apple gives life to Summersby. Summersby is a delicious sweet taste of sunshine imported across the ocean all the way from Denmark. The people in Denmark are smarter, and so are you if you drink Summersby. (laughs) With flavors like apple, blackberry, pear, elderflower lime, red rhubarb, and a taste as regal as this fake accent, there's something for everyone to enjoy. And now you can try them all in the Summer's Bee Mixer Pack, available wherever fine beverages are sold. So go on and try for yourself the crisp, refreshing taste of Summer's Bee. Ah, your taste buds deserve it. Please drink resplendently. And I'm just seeing here that, uh, you know, obviously watermelon's coming out too. I don't know if you guys have a chance to try it. I still haven't gotten a, a case of it yet, but I'm excited when I do. Got to talk to my buddy at uh, at Summersby. But I have also noticed that Cronenberg Blanc also has a new one called Fruit Rouge. It is a, a red looking one. I'm, I'm excited to try that too. So I got to bug my buddy and see what I can do about getting some more Summersby because uh, he was going to come by at the party and uh, and got, got busy, wasn't able to make it. So... Um, 
I'm excited to try some new stuff, guys. I love being an alcoholic. I got to get on the elliptical machine even more so that I can try all these new delicious beverages that are coming out on the market. Josh, are you trying to fill a hole with booze? Maybe. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not a psychiatrist. And it doesn't matter how many books I read, you know, on psychiatry and psychology and all that stuff. You know, there's only so much I can do. Did you say reading books on psycho? Well, who would provide you with such books, Bach Josh? Oh, my partner's at DK. That's who. You know, my buddy's DK, Dorling Kindersley. Uh, this week, guys, I read a very cool book, which is now out of reach. Fuck. Give me one sec. I read a great book. Where's the book? It's right behind me. Oh, but it was super good. I actually read it right before I did the podcast and it's called less guys. I saw it on their, uh, on their site. I was chatting with my contact at DK and, um, I'm just poking around the website, looking at some different things. He pointed me to give me a link. And then, you know, when I'm on DK site, man, they, uh, there's so much, so much good stuff. I, you know, I'm, I'm excited every week I get to read another friggin' book. That's just got so much cool stuff. And anyways, this book is called less. It's a visual guide to minimalism. So with everything else that I'm doing, um, I've seen some, uh, you know, some videos and some concepts and everything like that on minimalism, you know, in the last few months. And, um, I find it interesting. I don't know if I'm, if I'm fully able to totally commit to it, but it's, it feels like something that, that it were, you know, if I had my own space, um, I think I would try to do this. I really, truly think I would try to do this. So, um, minimalism, I, I'm going to read from the book because I don't know if I would be able to paraphrase it well enough. Sometimes if I'm not ready, um, I just end up talking in circles. So the introduction says, before you get too tangled up in decluttering your closets, organizing your schedule and learning how to keep the mess at bay for good. Let's start with the basics. You may be asking yourself questions such as what is minimal, excuse me, what is minimalism exactly? Why is it important? And who is it for? This section will give you an idea how you can fit minimalism into your life, regardless of your aspirations, career goals, or family dynamics. So what is minimalism? Minimalism is unsubscribing from the idea that how much you own equates to your level of happiness, letting go of the unnecessary, the removal of distractions, a way to reclaim your time, an intentional way of living that allows you to identify what's important to you, simplicity and freedom. So this book goes through so many different things in terms of minimalism. Cause when I first started reading this, like I've, I've watched like little YouTube videos where, you know, a girl's like, you know, I, I'm a journalism student and I decided to really find it about minimalism. And so she'll, you just see her like immediately throwing all of her shit away and whatever. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, how do you just throw away like 80% of your wardrobe, you know, 90% of your wardrobe? How do you just throw away your possessions or whatever? Like it feels like someone's just fucking cutting loose from society. Right. So when I started reading this, like the first, the first few pages, it actually talks about misconceptions about minimalism, which was good because what was still sitting with me lingering in my head was the stuff that I'd seen before about minimalism, you know, little five minute buzz, buzz videos that sort of give you an idea of what minimalism is, but not really going into it. And I think that I personally would benefit a lot from minimalism just because I do have a lot of things. This book goes into, you know, just how, if you, if you see things in front of you everywhere, it's just a mental distraction because you've got, you know, constantly got shit inundating you and, and making you think of other things. Um, uh, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's some ethical stuff involved with minimalism, which they do address very early on. It's not, it's not lengthy or anything like that. It's, it's addressed really early. I really like the layout of the book. So the book is, is, uh, it's the, the, the writing on the pages is even very minimalist. You know what I mean? So you have a whole page and then I would say like the bottom 20%, you know, like the left side in a, in a paragraph is used. You know, so the pages are, you know, not every page is like that, but the ideas is a very minimalist feel to the book. It's uh, a lot of the book is, is basically grayscale, but there are some colored images there and it actually really, really helps, um, illustrate the contrasting colors and things like that. Because one of the misconceptions is that minimalists just use, you know, just they, all their clothes are all their clothes and all the colors everything they have are like gray, white, and, and black. But it's, it's kind of like, well, if you're, if you're trying to only have, you know, essential clothing and not too much of it, you can coordinate better with, you know, clothing that, that, that matches other things easier. You can, you can have colors, 
but you know, it's harder to coordinate them. So, you know, if you want to do that, do that. What's great about it too, is it goes through different sections about how to, how to declutter and how to eliminate things, flow charts of questions and exercises when you're doing them to be able to get rid of stuff. Now I would imagine that they use uh, strategies similar to this when they're dealing with like hoarders. But uh, what's really cool about this is there's flow charts of here's how to, you know, declutter an area. Here's how to, to basically, and it's like a psychological thing of how to talk yourself into, you know, knowing for sure whether you need something or not. Um, there's, there's like, like there's a, there's one page here that's just 25 things you can trash without even thinking. And then it's just all imagery of all the different things. Cause as always DK marries beautiful imagery with their stuff. Um, like I said, it talks about how to deca de detach yourself from things. Um, it also like gets you to pace yourself too, because like, if you're excited about the idea, you can get carried away and throw away shit you need. So again, it helps you through that process. As I was reading more and more into the book, it really eliminated a lot of my concerns of like, well, then how the fuck do you deal with it? They have all this. There's a 30 day, um, minimalism challenge where every day you do something different that makes you, you know, that, that helps get you closer and closer to, to being a minimalist. Um, you know, just, I'll give you a couple, I'll read you a few different examples from different parts of it. So just like one of the days would be, um, you know, reassess your budget. And that's just one thing. That's, that's what you do for that day. The 30 day minimalism challenge. You just reassess your budget. Uh, another one, and I'm picking these at random, sort your inboxes until you get them to zero. So just going through your, uh, you know, your emails. And that's another thing that it does is it teaches you how to do, you know, technological minimalism, you know, how to declutter your mind, you know? So it's not just like, Hey, here's how to organize your house. It's not a book about spatial minimalism. It's a, it's really is about a lifestyle minimalism from your spaces to your digital spaces, to your, your mental capacity. And that's, that's where I get a lot. I got a lot of fucking clutter. I, I mean, I have clutter in the other areas too. I got one room in a house. Um, I, I just, it's so funny too, because I actually had to right in the middle of the party, I got a, an email telling me that, uh, I ran out of my cloud space on Apple. So I actually had to, to buy a larger storage option from, uh, from Apple because I just have too much of my computer. So I, I need to declutter my digital space, my mental space and my physical space. So, um, I, I really, like I said, I really connected with a lot of things in this book. And while it seems tough it really what like it, it really did sort of go like, you know what? I, I could benefit from this. And maybe I won't be like an insane minimalist, but there's a lot of these minimalism techniques that I can try. Um, it, it actually will teach you this book too. It actually teaches you different styles of home decor based on minimalism. So I think the three of them, I'm just gonna read them. Here's a cozy decor, they have hard edge decor and frugal decor. It's definitely different kinds of excuse me different styles, right? So sometimes like back when I was with Crystal, she really liked the uh, rustic type stuff. So like old stressed and worn wood looks. Well, they have that in here where it's basically they're, they're big on, um, repairing things that you already have. So if you have something you're not using that needs repair to repair it, if you can't repair it, repurpose it. So if you can take like an old frame apart and use the wood for something else and use the glass for something different, like they're, they're big on that. And I don't say big, like make it sound like there's big sections of the book, but throughout the flow charts, some of the, the, the areas that'll lead you to is like, you know, if it's, is it broken, you know, and then one of the questions might be, can you use it somewhere else, you know, or, or can, you know, is it worth it to someone else to repair? Can you give it away? Like it's really big on not wasting which I, again, that's, that's something I've just been a part. And I'm sure a lot of you out there can relate with that too, not wanting to waste needlessly. So, um, they go through color palettes too. So again, when you're doing minimalism, they're showing you colors that are, that, that go together, which I think is really cool. It's like, you know, like little paint chips on the page. And of course these are actually in color. So you can see the different ones and they actually tell you what the different, uh, colors do in terms of mental recognition and things like that. So just, if you're looking to make a space, have a certain feel, Right. Because if you're using whites, blacks, and grays, it can feel very sterile. You know, um, do they have that one here? Yeah. They're saying neutral, refined, bold, polished. So it feels almost like, you know, you're walking into a professional space, but you know, there's, there's different, you know, different color palettes. Um, there's a page, uh, which I think is a great resource right here. It says the only 45 items you need in your home. And it lists all of the things that you would absolutely have to have. Um, and where is it? Uh, I really, really like the strategies for display. Um, 
it, it goes through and it shows stuff. Like I'm not trying to just turn every page, but like uh, that's what's so, so great about this book is that like you know it's only a couple of pages to get such a big concept. And they even have uh, house plants. They talk about how how much plants. Basically, one of the things that they're saying in this book is that if it's not something that you use on a regular basis or it's not like you know beautiful to you, um, to get rid of it. And the idea is that plants are something that they add a lot of life to a space. You know, they're contributing oxygen at the same time. They can really, they're not big, but they can add a lot of character, um, for the amount of space that they take, they put up. And this actually, there's a whole page here with, that's got nine different house plants that they recommend, you know, and, and what kind of light they need and everything like that. So again, just cause you go, oh, Hey, like if, if some things will just be like, Hey, um, and another thing you do is add lots of plants. It's like, well, that's easier said than done. Cause how do you care for plants? How do you, what kind of plants do you get? You know, well, that's, they've, you know, they've added that to this book. So, you know, there's, there's a section on just the essential kitchen tools, all you would need for a kitchen. Um, I mean, I'm not going to read everything. They, they go into cooking minimalism. Um, yeah. So here's, here's a quote uh, on this page it says, have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. But they go into bedrooms and and all sorts of different parts, bathrooms. They actually have a section of uh, all the different. Like, there's a skincare and beauty product section that obviously I don't need. Um, but they have everything from. I like this page. This one was the only seven cleaning products you need, and it's everything from like hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, distilled water, baking soda, that kind of thing. And then what they do is they just tell you all the products, but then on the very next page, it actually tells you how to make like a drain cleaner out of them, air fresheners, stove and oven cleaner. It basically tells you the ingredients and what portions to make. So to basically make your own natural household, uh, household cleaners. So I, I thought that was really cool because that way you're not, you're not, you know, just loading up the underside of your sink with just tons and tons of different things. You've got seven ingredients in your house somewhere. And if you need to make something for something, you know, you use that. I, I thought it was fucking awesome. But, um, I mean, it goes on to show you more, it shows like office spaces and things like that and how to make them. It makes, you know, more challenges and how to set certain goals. Um, you know, how to basically build a wardrobe that makes sense, a small minimalist wardrobe. So it makes some suggestions about like the things that you may need. Um, it even says like, cause, cause, Obviously minimalism, it's like, okay, I get the concept, but you might be in a relationship, right? And the other person isn't a minimalist. There's a section on how you can be minimalist, even if the other people around you are not. There's a section, um, for pets and kids. So how to be a minimalist and still have those things. Um, there's a lot of really cool shit in this book. And so if minimalism, if you don't know anything about minimalism, uh, YouTube it. You'll see some context, but this book really gives you, it's a great reference. It's a great step-by-step -step guide, the flow charts, the, the suggestions, the color palettes, everything like that. Um, it's a very interesting, it's very freeing, you know, to, when I'm reading it, it, you really get an idea that, you know, like, you know what? Yeah, we really don't need a lot of stuff. I'll be honest with you. The whole time I was reading it, the one thing I was thinking like, fuck, do I have to get rid of? Cause like, like I said, watching the videos makes you feel like you're just, they're just kind of like, all right, take everything you own and throw it all out. Except for the stuff that you n absolutely need to survive. It's not that insane. The idea is just, if it's not enriching your life, get rid of it. So for me, I, the, the whole time I was reading, it, I'm like, well, you know, cause one of the things they say is that if you're not watching your TV, right? A lot of people, there's misconceptions about just, just space when you own a house or when you live in a house, well, the living room needs to have a TV. Well, they're like, well, look, do you watch TV? You know, are you watching TV every day or do you have it just because you think you have one? If you don't watch TV, if you're active and you're out of the house, then get rid of it. There's no obligation to have TV. You know, in some of the pictures I'll see, I'll see the bedroom and it's got like a book on the bed with a, a, a you know, a cup of coffee on top of it. So it's like, okay, well clearly this is not someone who's just thrown away all their possessions and like, all right, I'm just going to drink water to the tap like a fucking dog. I mean, if you've trained your dog to drink water to the tap, but it's, um, it's really cool book guys. And it's really cool concepts. You know, um, I, I was worried that I was like, okay, well, I, I mean, I guess I have to get rid of my PlayStation and my Xbox and all that stuff. And it's like, no, if I'm, if these are things that I use or I'm going to use in the next one, like keep it. It's just that there's a lot of knickknacks and stuff. Like I'm looking right now at the back of the, the door of my, of my closet. It's open. I got hooks on it and I've got an umbrella that I bought. I've never used once because I'm a guy and I don't think, oh, looks a little bad outside. Maybe I'll bring an umbrella. No, I bought it for that reason. Damn right. I did, but I've never used it. You know, I've got little statues and knickknacks and things like that. I've never used. Um, I like them. I mean, I had, I'm looking at a wolf statue I had. I dropped one of them and fucking shattered. I had it for years, loved it. But the one that I dropped shattered 
And now I've just got one sitting there. I don't, I don't even know that I have it most of the time. You know, I've, I keep boxes of things in case I need to bring them back or whatever. So I got more shit that I need, you know, maybe books that I'm never going to read. Um, so I think I need to, uh, I definitely need to, to clear my space out a little bit, you know, anyways, less a visual guide to minimalism by, uh, by my partners at DK books, guys. Um, super, super good book. I really like if like with all the other stress books and things I've talked about, uh, after reading this, you can really see how getting rid of just a lot of stuff. And again, that's not just possessions, you know, clearing out your digital space. There's a whole section on, on cleaning out social medias and stuff like that, you know, um, in and out systems. Oh, uh, one of the things that I read, I, I'm, I'll move on soon. Sorry guys. Just, I, I haven't, uh, I love everything that they send me, but, um, then again, I do pick the stuff that's interesting to my life, right? I mean, they got books on cars, but <laughs> it's not doing us. They have a whole section about spending about how, uh, they call it the one in one out system. So if you buy something new and bring it home, you got to get rid of something else, you know? Uh, and it's not that you have to do it. It's just that if that's the, if you're trying to live a minimalist life as you're acquiring things, cause that's sort of the rut that we all get into is we start to get used to acquiring things and we don't get rid of other stuff. So you can apply the one in one out system if you start to get new things, right? So if you replace a piece of clothing, well, then it's replacing a piece of clothing and get rid of something else. And then they have these no spend days, which I thought was really cool because I spend, I'll be honest, I'll be out and I'll fucking, I'll spend. And it gives me that little drug feeling, even if it's something I don't need right? Like buying a folding chair. I don't, I've never really had a need for a folding chair, but I was like, oh, 30 bucks for a folding chair with a side table. That's amazing. So I bought one, but they got these no, no spend days. So you can take your calendar and it te teaches you how to like mark days on the calendar where it's just a no spend day on that day. You don't spend anything. So for me, it would be like, go drive Uber and you're not buying coffee. You're not stopping at Costco on the way home. You're not going to go out and buy lunch instead that I really, really liked. And, uh, and then the other one was like, it was like a 10, 10 questions to ask yourself. No, sorry. It wasn't 10, 10 questions to ask yourself. It was just like a, before you buy something checklist, does it do this? Does it do that? Make sure that it doesn't do this. You know, I, I, I really liked it. I really, really liked it. Yeah. This whole book guys. Awesome. Less a visual guide to minimalism for my partners at dk.com slash CA in Canada, or, uh, of course, dk.com in the U S and just uh, Google DK. Anywhere in the world, guys, they are super sending. Thank you so much to my, uh, my sponsors, guys. Um, I love y'all very much. You know, I do's, uh, coming up this week, guys on Friday, as I mentioned, uh, that episode with Matt Davis that I, I did, uh, will be coming out. So please, please listen to that. Please tell me what you think. We had a really deep conversation at which point, uh, or we have, of which there's part, parts of it where, um, Matt has gone so uh, deep into something that is, you know, I don't want to say beyond my grasp, but certainly just, um, uh, uh, what is it? Vocabulary wise is, is outstanding. I, I could not follow everything he was saying. And I just thought to say that I was like, Duh, but I mean, there was times where he would go so deep into something that I'm like, shit, I, I, I'm, you've lost me. You've gone where I can't follow at least, uh, like I said, vocabulary wise. So you're going to have to, you know, dumb it down for me. Um, but, but it was good. We talked about communication. We talked about, uh, you know, world politics. Um, and that sounds maybe boring to some, but what I mean is just like, it's very easy to follow. I mean, again, I was part of the conversation, so we got into it. We, but it was great. I, I'm really looking forward for you guys to hear that, that thing. I, I love talking with Matt because he stimulates me intellectually. Um, super funny guy and, and like stupid, silly sometimes, you know what I mean? But, but very, very smart man, uh, a good friend, love talking with that guy. And, uh, and I think that, you know, when, uh, when you guys hear the episode, you'll, you'll get it. Um, I got a, a couple tastings coming up this weekend, Saturday night, I will be going to jazz fest. Um, a new potential partner has invited me to be a part of their VIP, uh, section for jazz fest. So I, uh, gracefully, graciously, I apologize, accepted, uh, Sunday's Canada day guys. Hope you got great plans. I do not have plans as of yet, but I know I will be drinking and probably watching some fireworks. So I, I hope that, uh, 
we'll be able to do some, uh, you know, I'll be able to see some of you guys soon. My, my listeners, I know I'll be seeing some of my listeners on Monday for, uh, my buddy Mika is having a, a brunch. I hope this isn't a surprise party because he listens to the podcast and I'm not editing this out. So if I ruin something, I'm very sorry, but nobody told me to keep my stupid fool mouth shut. So I didn't. <laughs> Go for biggest brunch, and then of course on Monday night, I am hosting the first show of the Prove Your Comic competition for Absolute Comedy. So very, very excited for that. Um, so yeah, come on out, guys. AbsoluteComedy.ca if you're in the Ottawa area. Now in Toronto, they'll be doing the same thing as well. The competition is a lot of fun to sort of see who's out there and to keep track. Everything you could see online at AbsoluteComedy.ca, they post the um, the the sort of the tournament tracker up to date. So it's every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in July. And then the finals for both clubs, sorry, it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Ottawa. Uh, and then the finals are in, uh, August for that in Toronto, it starts Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So what happens is Jason actually watches the show on Monday. Then he drives to Toronto and watches the show on Tuesday. So he gets to see everybody, you know, in, in both cities. So, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in Toronto, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Ottawa, both clubs have their finals for the first, uh, full week in August. So, uh, so check out as one more time, as I said, absolutecomedy.ca to get your tickets, uh, for that, whether you're in Toronto or Ottawa and, uh, and that, that ought to do it, you know, as usual, thank you to my partners at DK, uh, absolutecomedy.ca, Summersby, uh, portablepress.com. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun week coming up. You know, again, I want to have some more uh, results sort of to post for you guys. I'm hitting the elliptical. I'm eating better. So, you know, maybe I'll do a, a weigh in soon and let you guys know what's, uh, what's going on with that. I, I got to start, I got to start putting my weight in regularly, right? So that I know when I'm, I'm plateauing as it goes up and down. Um, you know, if you're not following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, check that out. I posted what I look like bald. Now it's out to the world. So, you know, I shaved my face. I posted that. I shaved my head. I posted that. Just keep, uh, just keep changing my look. You know, I'm working on my personal brand. All right. I want to see what I look like, you know, decide which, which fit is right for me. But, uh, but that's, that's the podcast guys. Thank you so much for listening. Um, you know, I always look forward to hear from you guys. Yeah. There's no emails this week, but you know what? If you want to send an email into me, let me know what's going on for your candidate today. Let me know how your candidate went. Cause it's going to be, uh, it's going to be over by the time we, uh, we read next contact at one man podcast.com. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the podcast as always. And I look forward to having some, uh, I look forward to having some interesting things coming up. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully not learning any new stupid laws while I'm having fun. Take care guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.